Welcome, travelers, to Tales from the Enchanted Forest, the podcast where we bring you fairy tales, folklore, myths, and legends. If you are new here, then welcome, welcome. For some background information, this podcast is usually hosted by me, Fox, and my co-host, Sparrow. But if you may have noticed, we are doing some short episodes, so solo episodes for the past few weeks. And today, it is just me again. Uh, Last time I covered the Caledonian boar hunt from Greek mythology and today I want to jump all the way over again all the way to Australia for a dreamtime story of the rainbow serpent. If you are unfamiliar with the term dreamtime or the dreaming, it is a term used by anthropologists to refer to the Australian Aboriginals concept of everyone, which is when their ancestral figures inhabited the lands and usually this is the creation period. So the term dream time is sometimes controversial since some scholars such as the linguist David Campbell Moore believe it was based on a mistranslation uh, by Francis Gillen and Walter Baldwin Spencer who were the two that originally used the concept. Either way, the rainbow serpent comes from this dream time period, this time of creation stories and myths. And this creature does have lots of different names, it has lots of different sexes, lots of different origins and purposes. However, the one thing that can be agreed upon is that it is a creation creature. So it played a role in the lakes and the rivers. And oftentimes when you see rainbows or when you see storms or rainfall, it's because to some degree to this creature. There are many, many, many different Dreamtime stories. There are many different Rainbow Serpent stories and they will all be linked in the show notes on our website, so be sure to check those out. But if you are just here to listen to a nice story and learn something new, then please sit back and enjoy as I take you back to the everyone. Long ago in the Dreamtime, when the earth was new and nothing grew, there lived a sleeping Rainbow Serpent. One day she awoke and slithered out of the earth onto the surface. There she traveled far and wide, leaving deep crevices in her wake. When she was satisfied that she had traveled far enough, she finally returned to where she started and took stock of the world around her. First, she called to the frogs, and the sleeping frogs awoke. They had bellies full of water, and when they woke up, the serpent tickled them until they laughed and filled all of the crevices the rainbow serpent had left behind. They laughed and laughed until they'd formed the first rivers and lakes on earth. The earth soaked up this welcome water, and soon trees and flowers began to grow. The new lush landscape tempted the other animals to wake up and join the rainbow serpent. Under the rule of the rainbow serpent, the animals lived happily, until one day they didn't. As is often the case, the animals grew weary of one another. Discord broke out, and the rainbow serpent came up with a new declaration. Any of the animals who behaved well would be rewarded and turned into humans. Any who behaved badly would be turned into stone. The ones who listened to the rainbow serpent were indeed rewarded, and their tribes were given totems bearing the mark of their former selves. The kangaroos, emus, carpet snakes, and geckos all became totems, among others. Furthermore, to ensure that there would be enough food for these new beings, the rainbow serpent decreed that they could not eat their own totem creatures, but only those of others. The creatures that behave badly are now lost to us. They were turned into stone and they became the mountains and the hills. The human tribes lived together on this land, and the rainbow serpent dwelt deep in the permanent water holes. Even in the droughts, her residents always had water and ensured the survival of the creatures she brought up to earth. Time went on, and as is the case with stories, some of the humans began to forget about the rainbow serpent. One day, a group of hunters were hunting kangaroo. When they stopped to rest, it began to drizzle and then to pour, and the older hunters used this time to tell stories and sing songs while the younger ones played games. Just as it came, the rain turned back into a drizzle, and a rainbow appeared in the sky. The older hunters immediately gathered their belongings and moved away. They knew it was the rainbow serpent making her way from one watering hole to the next. A young hunter who was with them was confused by this. And when they arrived back home, he asked them why they were so scared. Surely, if the creature was so frightening, then he could just spear it, and they wouldn't have to be afraid anymore. The elders were horrified at his brazen boldness and told him the story of the dreamtime being. After creating the rivers and the mountains, the rainbow serpent had settled in the cool depths of the waterholes to rest and must not be disturbed. The young hunter understood at last, and so the story was passed on from generation to generation. To this day, the rainbow serpent can be seen arcing across the sky as she travels between the waters. And that is the story of the rainbow serpent. Of course, you might have noticed this version of the story is quite family friendly with the tummy tickling and the easygoing terraforming. 
However, not all rainbow serpent stories are quite so simple. In one story, the Wawalag sisters are traveling when the eldest gave birth near the rainbow serpent's waterhole. Some of the blood did end up traveling down and the snake was enraged and followed them to their hunt where they were sleeping. He ate them up, but later he does regurgitate them after being bitten by an ant. Sometimes the rainbow serpent accompanies the great mother while she creates humans and in other stories, it falls from the sky. There are so many different stories and as I mentioned in the beginning, there will be links to them as well as some really great artwork from Australian Aboriginal artists all over our social media and on our website. Hopefully next week I will be joined again by Sparrow. I miss you Sparrow. Um, and we will share some great stories with you guys coming up. As a hint, because you've made it all the way to the end, our next stories will come from the Barbie movies. For those of you that don't know, the Barbie movies were from the early 2000s, I believe, early to late 2000s. They're quite interesting. They come from um, operas and they come from stories and books and plays and fairy tales and folklore. So there's so much to pull from. And in anticipation of the Barbie movie coming out later this month, we thought it'd be quite interesting to take a look at some of the different stories, such as Swan Lake, The Twelve Dancing Princesses, Rapunzel. There's so many. All right. Uh, so remember, you can always reach us wherever you'd like, on our website, on Twitter, on Mastodon, on, on gmail and we'd love to hear from you and don't forget travelers there will always be a place for you in the enchanted forest with us 